Good evening. Welcome to Hard Fire. This is the third installment of our unprecedented three-part series of debates on 9-11 conspiracy theories. The fighters are, once again, Professor James Fetzer, formerly of the University of Minnesota. His book, The 9-11 Conspiracy, The Scamming of America, is now available. And his opponent, as for the last two installments, Mark Roberts, debunker extraordinaire. We're going to start with World Trade Center 7 because we haven't really covered that subject in any of our debates here on Hard Fire, and I think it's, it's worth talking about, even though time constraints will prevent us from doing more than scratching the surface. So I'd like to begin with Professor Fetzer. Uh, tell us about World Trade Center 7. In particular, I'd like you to link the collapse of World Trade Center 7 to some sort of coherent conspiracy. In other words, why bring down an obscure building seven hours after the fact when people outside of New York City have never even heard of World Trade Center 7? What, how does it fit into the conspiracy? Well, that's an interesting question, Ron, and it yeah. certainly deserves some speculation. It was an extremely robust building in its construction, for example, even though in the World Trade in the Twin Towers, they used steel support beams that were hollowed out in the center. In Building 7, they used solid steel support beams, no doubt in part because the building was erected over two massive electrical generators providing electricity to lower Manhattan. The occupants of that building included the CIA, the FBI, the Secret Service, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, and that may be a key to why Building 7 should be brought down, even though it was hit by no airplanes, had so no, no jet fuel based fires, and indeed only suffered relatively modest fires that could have easily been put, in, put out had not the firefighters been restricted from the building from around 10.30 in the afternoon. When the building did eventually collapse at 5.20 in the afternoon, it was a complete, total, and abrupt collapse perfectly symmetrical into its own foundation. It exhibited all the classic signs of a controlled demolition. Indeed, even uh, eminences such as Dan Rather and Peter Jennings on the scene at the time said how this reminded them of the demolition of resorts and casinos in Las Vegas where regularly buildings are brought down so they can be reconstructed for the benefit of, of those who want to visit that locale. Okay, Mark, before I, I get your take on the collapse of World Trade Center 7, I just want to establish something here. If we assume that Building 7 had to be brought down because it contained sensitive documents, government nature, we are positing the existence of some investigative agency outside the vast conspiracy. In other words, there's some agency that the conspiracy fears being exposed by. Who are these people? <laughs> this is a good question. Uh, Jim had mentioned the, some agencies, the federal agencies that were in yeah. the, that building. Uh, the biggest occupant of the building was Solomon Smith Barney, the investment yeah. firm. They had about 80% of the building. Um, now, if I wanted to destroy some documents, what would I do? Um, I would them. either take my hard drive and, and wipe it and make sure it was securely erased or destroy it uh, or shred them uh, and shred them again. Um, what I don't do when I want to destroy some uh, credit card receipts at home is set my building on fire for, for, uh, for seven hours, slam uh, part of a skyscraper into it, and then blow it up. Um, that doesn't make much sense. Seems inefficient. One, pretty inefficient. Um, and also keep in mind that a lot of the documents from the World Trade Center collapses and from Building 7 were recovered and hard drives were recovered. Um, not a high percentage. But um, so if you wanted to be sure to get rid of something, you wouldn't leave it in the building for one thing. Now, who would do such a thing? I can't imagine. Um, uh, this is my problem. Who? The, the conspiracy seems to have the power to intimidate the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, air traffic controllers, uh, military personnel, NORAD, the uh, New York City Fire Department, the Police Department, the Boeing Corporation, all the forensic examiners at the Pentagon right. in New York City. Yet they are afraid of someone who can investigate them. Who, well, it may have who would to that do, be? It may have to do with the Securities and Exchange Commission having records on a lot of very important investigations, including, and we're, including we're, all the en Enron documents. Uh, did they Remember, have to, we, did had they this have curious, we had this curious phenomenon with 
Ken Lay, who is found guilty, but before he can be sentenced, he purportedly dies, and consequently no penalty can be imposed, and all the documents and records from the Enron case, for example, are in Building 7. But what's very interesting that we're not recognizing is Larry Silverstein had insured the World Trade Center against terrorist attacks for $3.5 billion just six weeks before these events. He had major problems with the tin Twin Towers because they were loaded with asbestos and he was pr having occupancy now, problems. Now, didn't Silverstein want to insure for 1.5 and his partners wanted him to insure for 5.2 and they compromised on 3.5? Now, since That's the, correct. Since the costs of rebuilding are something like, uh, I believe, $6.4 billion, More than that, isn't this yeah. the dumbest insurance scam in history? I, I, well, I think there is a case, by the way, for insurance scam here indeed, because if these buildings were brought down by controlled demolitions, a, a very sophisticated kind from the top down, in the case of the Twin Towers, and a very classic from the bottom up in the case of Building 7, but then, it's, then it's I an th odd scam. I like to it is. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I'd like yes. to go back to it. I'd like okay. to believe that the insurance companies would have a serious interest in the results of our research. They, sh they sure would. Sure. Yeah, they absolutely. sure would. But let's get back yeah. to uh, one of the possible motives that you mentioned for Building 7 coming down. The SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, did keep a lot of files there. Um, can you name an investigation that was hindered or stopped because of the files they lost there? Oh, I can't off the top of my head, Mark, but I, I, I imagine can't there are probably. But, but how would you go about finding that out? You're uh -huh. the scholar. Well, but this is not my area of specific expertise. Okay, but, like but, you, but, as you have described okay. yourself as a generalist, I mean, but what, many what members some, of what are you saying? Uh, our now, wouldn't someone right, in the know. SEC be complaining? Wouldn't they be saying, hey, right. you know, we had an ongoing There's investigation. A, there are ways to find yeah. these things out, yeah. is asking well, people, uh, rather than just making the claim. The what you guys do is just make the claim. I don't think it's obvious, Ron, when you have the administration stacking the federal prosecutors with a lot of, you know, Bush loyalists who are but, not competent in, under the law. You, you see, you know, the problem that a lot of people have and not, I mean, among not other just debunkers, but they're saying uh, it, it's almost like reading the book of Genesis, where if you read closely, you're getting two different creation you are indeed. woven together. Man and woman now together, or first, first we, man and then yeah. Yeah, okay. first We've Eve got and then this man incredibly out of her vast her conspiracy originating at a federal level, and their motive seems to be line the pockets of Dick Cheney's cronies. And then That's we have Larry Silverstein who's working this insurance scam that costs him about $3 billion. That, that loses him but money. How do we connect the vast conspiracy to Larry Silverstein? Where well, he had two enormous it? white elephants on his hands he wanted to get rid of. He couldn't take down the buildings by conventional explosives. But they're not white elephants they're at, all. They're they're not at all. That, they were yeah. money well, makers. But the, they the Port Authority was instructing him to take that asbestos out. Can let me address that. erecting well, scaffolding let me, yeah, around Jim, 210 Jim, Jim, let me address that. Yeah. There was only asbestos in one port portion of the North Tower and then some pipes down below. There was no legal requirement to remove it. The Port Authority wanted to remove uh, asbestos in a lot of their facilities uh, because tenants wanted them for one thing and they thought they could potentially at some point be a health risk. Uh, but there was no requirement in the World Trade Center to do that. They, they went through, they sued their insurance companies because they wanted to get money to do that because their tenants, whenever they would move in and, and remodel, uh, would would ask for the asbestos to be removed, but there was no requirement to do it. So there's, it started off with thir up to 38 floors of the North Tower only with asbestos insulation. About half of that was removed over the years. So that's all you had left. But, uh, but, so, but Mark, so, this, is, this is very curious because you claim that when the planes hit the building, they knocked off the fireproofing, which was the asbestos. No, no, sir. On the, the, on the steel. The asbestos was banned in New York City uh, to be used as fireproofing in 1970. So they replaced it with other fireproofing that didn't include asbestos. Well, the construction Spray began in 66. They were already admitting occupancy in 1970. Right, but when did they start putting the fireproofing on that steel in, in the towers? Only up to the 38th floor. This is all public records. You can look up the court documents and all that. Um, so, uh, plus, well, the towers were not white elephants. They were making money. They were 98% occupied, which is considered full occupancy. The mall, the concourse, was one of the most profitable in the world. It's also a matter of public record that there were 47 court columns, 240 external columns. Uh, the intricate ladder right, network but we're, we're talking a very about, sophisticated We're talking about Building 7 here and, and Larry Silverstein. Capability. And yeah. John Skilling, who was a senior partner in the let's, firm let's that get, was Jim, responsible let's get back for to the building engineering, seven. Building seven. observed that they would support 2,000%, 20 times their expected 
live load. That meant they were perfectly capable of sustaining any amount of additional weight that might be imposed now, by... We'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, I want to see the documentation for that because various engineers have said, well, that's absurd. No, no building has a safety factor of 20. I mean, well, maybe, this, this maybe one two. Did. No, it certainly didn't. Yeah. Let me, uh, uh, in in would, fact, these, these are two of the... In fact, the factor for overturning... Most soundly in, designed buildings in the The factor for overturning in wind load for the towers was between 1.9 and 2.7. Uh, so that's not 20. Let's get back to Building 7. You had said that... Uh, the fires were not that large. They were. And they've made that repeatedly. Here are uh, quotes from the people on the scene. Okay? I don't take my word for it. I don't take your word for it. I take the word of the fire department. This is a really big thing because we, the, the conspiracy that you're claiming happened to bring this building down means that what all the people said who were in charge on the scene, the fire department, Port Authority, the police, New York police, that they're lying about what actually happened. Well, let's talk about because that. Because they say that th they say that your version didn't. Happen. Not only did Giuliani bottle up all the first orders. responders, not allow their testimony, Jim, let me, out, but let now me, that it's coming out, we have this. firemen after firemen Can reporting I the sound of explosion. Yeah. Boom, Just boom, 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 boom in those buildings. Yeah. Now we we, we even have uh, first responders saying they actually were present for the countdown for the destruction of Building Seven. Okay, but we have demolition experts who say that this looked nothing like a controlled demolition. The that, only demolition expert in the world who thinks that it does is Danny Joanko. Wrong. That's what this and here we go. Well, here, here, here are the quotes. No, there are you no can't demol yourself look at that building and see it's a controlled demolition. I'm not qualified I, I, to make I, I, I that judgment. You. I'm saying that demolition this, this experts is not say that it science. was not. We have this taken is not that rocket challenge. Science, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, see, it's not not my job to say no. it looks. It's easy to manufacture paper. But whose job was it? Whose job was it? Whose job was it? Chief of Operations Daniel Nigro of the FDNY. Right? The biggest decision we had to make was to clear the area, create a collapse zone around the severely damaged WTC7 building. A number of fire officers and companies assessed the damage to the building. The appraisals indicated that the building's integrity was in serious doubt. Same man. It had very heavy fire on many floors. You're shaking your head. Have you? Yeah, talked, I am shaking my head. Have you talked to Dan Nigro? No, these are ridiculous ha reports. Have you talked to Dan Nigro? I've studied the building's collapse. Have you talked to anyone who I'm, uh, who I'm about to read? All 47 stories were on fire. It was wild. Number seven was fully Jeez. involved. When the building this is came, ridiculous. When the all, building, all visual evidence when the building came all of down, this is completely ridiculous. Can I interrupt you just for a yeah, second? Sure. You can continue reading the quotes. I just would like Jim to uh, answer this question for me. Can we posit any sort of coherent conspiracy theory that does not implicate the fire department. Is there any way that a conspiracy oh, I don't believe the fire department was implicated, although there might he, have been a few. He's reading you the quotes fire where firemen was, are was telling you that the building was coming down. They had assessed well, the damage. Well, I am very skeptical and, about and that they, those. I'd like to see them make Jim, those statements Jim, under and, that, and, and so that, forth and subject to cross-examination. Well, you're, you're, kind of, you're, you're evading the issue. No, the it's just like the Pentagon, Ron. Jim, I demonstrated the, the four different ways. firemen were on television it's in New York telling us that this building is coming down. The Pentagon, I gave you four conclusive arguments that no plane can have hit no Boeing 757. But yes, a, seven, a 757 yet, did hit yet, the But it did not. It manifestly did not. Because you and believe, yet he would offer, you know, a hundred witnesses because you offering believe, Jim, reports that claim to have because seen Because you believe your argument is that they're all lying. Either lying or well, they're deceived, mistaken. There are various ways you can be mistaken. And all the evidence is faked. I beg your pardon? And all the evidence is faked. And all the evidence is fake. I have plenty of evidence that's completely unfaked. I'm only interested in authentic evidence. And, and, and Chief Dan, a lot of these, and these Chief, words on paper and are with all due respect, you haven't Words on paper. Any. These guys had their lives. you a photograph of the clear, green, unblemished Jim. lawn? That's okay. one of the major smoking guns at the Pentagon. No, it's no smoking gun at all. Look the plane at, didn't hit course. the lawn. It hit the Pentagon. Look at me. Well, if it had come in on the low trajectory, it would have had to chew up the lawn, Ron. Chief it's Daniel physically Nigro. impossible to do it. Jim, but did Chief Daniel Nigro make the decision to pull the people away or not? Pull the people away? Yes. There were no firemen inside the building from 1030. You're talking about yes, there were. persons did around he, the outside uh, of did, the building? Did, 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 is his testimony, do you think, accurate? He's the one who said, uh, it came down to me. Why? Because the Chief Pete Gancy was killed in the collapse of the North Tower. So Chief Nigro took over as Chief of Operations. Uh, you know, this is another thing. If you want to posit that the top people in the fire department were involved, a lot of them were killed there. Listen, we so so is is you're shaking your have, head. We have He's, multiple. He says he gave that order. Photographic is records of the, destru of the everyone destruction else, of the uh, everyone building else seven. says yes, that's true. I've got page after page of quotes of the of the severity of the fires. Many of them saying fully what involved. What would be a the good building analogy. was roaring. Right. So are they all wrong? What, but what, you're right. What, what what didn't happen didn't happen and. 
well, what they're reporting. What did the firemen were saying all afternoon that this building is unstable, it's going to come down. But it wasn't. It was one of the most uh, robustly constructed but buildings in the history. But what do you know? That, but uh, what, but what, what do you know that these firemen no, didn't sir. know? I mean, I you have know, to infer you know that a lot of this that testimony is inaccurate, know. possibly made up. I would like to get them under oath. You know, in the, I mean, in the Twin Towers, we had all those first responders saying how they heard explosion after explosion. Boom, 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 boom. Now, if you're going to count that, then you have to accept that there were explosions well, you, in those buildings. You would have to hear things explosion. Cannot be correct. Wouldn't you have to hear explosions in a large building fire? I mean, yeah. soda machines are blowing up, copy machines are blowing up. <laughs> well, it's I don't think that's what they I, were reporting, here's, what, Ron. here's part where well, I agree. Yes, I agree reporting with, explosions. I agree with Jim, uh, which will surprise a lot of people on this. There were a lot of accounts of explosions from people who were in responsible positions. You take their, their words for it. You don't take their words for it that their account of Building 7 is, is accurate, which I have a problem with. What are you, what are you, but, claiming? What but, are you claiming was the mechanism but by which Building 7 came but down? But here's... Uh, no, Mark, just tell me simply, what, what, how do you think Building 7 came down? I think that the, it's a reasonable uh, report, that the interim report that NIST put out in 2004, they've been studying for two and a half years since. Uh, and I'm going to wait to, for their conclusions to come out well, to make that judgment. They're the ones who are really studying this. This is like Norman Mineta's testimony uh, in the underground no, let's, bunker. Let's, it's so uh, embarrassing that the 9 11 we're Commission report doesn't even include it. Over. It's not embarrassing at all. It's discussed by the Why would I, I, I spoke, an engineering report. I spoke report. to Chris Kojum of the 9 11 Commission. He's a senior staffer, and he said that Mineta's testimony was so obviously discredited by every other witness. His timeline was off by 30 minutes. We saw no reason no, to no, put no, it no, in. Let me confirm my can, I, can I bring this back so to in, the, the trade center yes, for a second? Just for a second. Just for a second. Just for a second. Well, well, this, now, is, listen, this is where I agree with it. Jim, can, can I please? please. This, is, yes. this is where we agree about the, the reports of, of explosions and bombs at the, at the World Trade Center. Uh, here are some from first responders, fire department, police department. Sounded like bombs, sounded like uh, popping and exploding explosions, boom, 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 sounded like explosions, like a shotgun going off, sounded like bombs. Uh, sounded like an explosion, lots of explosions, under the assumption that the, that the sounds were secondary bombs. Sounded like bombs, like a bomb going off. I mean, it was huge. So this is not small stuff they're talking about. That last one was Peter Hayden, deputy chief of the FDNY. So I, I agree with you on, on things like that. I, I agree with a lot of conspiracists on, on things like that, that these people really did hear these things. Um, since, uh, since you buy into the government's got you're a conspiracist yourself, I hate to remind you, Mark. That's great. Mm -hmm. but, but here's what the problem I have is taking these quotes out of context. Uh, because that's what I just did. Because every one of these quotes I just read were the descriptions of people hitting the ground who had jumped or fallen from the towers, um, all of which sounded like explosions or like bombs to the people on the scene. That's how they described it. How do I know that? Because they tell you that in the rest of the testimony that they're giving. Uh, Listen, they're about, so, David, so, David Ray so, Griffin has been particularly good on this, but there are about you know, eight or ten characteristics that controlled demolition. Building 7 displayed, displayed all of them. But again, Except why, for the explosions. Why nobody on the scene. Nobody on the scene. Because he's a scholar. Don't. He's used to but doing scholarship. He's published, over, he's published more books than I have, Ron. Yes, but he's a scholar have, who gets everything wrong. He doesn't wrong. know anything about oh, no, controlled his book, demolition. His, his research is extremely meticulous. It's thorough. horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Demolition expert and I suggest, who says I suggest this isn't nice. Judy Wood isn't a perfect example. She's, She's not an a demolition expert. expert. She's an expert in structural engineering, right. and physics, and applied physics. She knows and structures nothing about control demolition. Here's Judy Wood. Listen, Go to, go to David Ray Griffin's books on this subject. Now, he has a new one about to appear, Debunking 9-11 Debunking, that I especially recommend. He's a superb, a superb scholar and very thorough and meticulous. And I defy anyone to read his books and not draw the same conclusion. His okay. books have been here's, debunked thoroughly. Here's, indeed, here's Judy Wood <laughs> from her website. He doesn't know what he's from her talking website, about. And this will show on, on the screen. Um, two photos, both from her website. One saying September 13th, the other saying September 13th. You see this area here? It's all cleared out on West Street. Where did all the steel go? She says the steel never hit the ground. She yeah. says all that 80% of the steel dissolved in midair in this aerial shot. Well, how can you find out when this photo might actually have been taken? They couldn't have cleared all this steel out in two days or a day and a half. Um, one thing, the huge footbridge is missing from this shot. Well, where and did yet it, it go? Was still standing. Where did it go? Right. Uh, the crane is a Lieber uh, 1550. She could have found Listen. out that came several days later. Listen, I but, but here's here's also from her website the same scene taken from the ground, also September 13th, which she says in, on her website. Both of them September 13th. A sea of steel. I a invite I invite anyone to a go. A sea of steel. 
to Judy Wood's website and review the evidence she has amassed there of the massiveness, the completeness of the devastation of the World Trade Center. Because we're not just talking about building one and two or even seven, but, but building three, four, five, six. He's talking evil. about the non-functional incapacity of the bathtub, which Mark wants to discuss. We're talking about the toasted car phenomenon, where you have vehicles that are crunched like beer cans after a fraternity party. Sure. It is a lot of weird stuff, and There's I can see no way. It. There's no way in which conventional explosives. It's only, no, it's it's only steel, weird. No steel turned to dust. And certainly, no, these, and certainly no explanation derivative of the government. No account. steel turned to dust. This, the, is, this is an absurdity. There wasn't uh, a lot of steel if, if in the, the dust. If the mass of those buildings had come down on the bathtub, as I may have explained during our last program, the steel it would was have shattered there. the bathtub. The steel existed. Listen, when it they took down the rest of the building six, Jim, it was only what eight, was what, uno momento. Sure. When they took down the last of building eight, it was only eight floors, but they brought it down with cables because they were so worried that it might damage the bathtub. That's called right. pulling building it, six. by the way. Uh, so they said it's the first time they'd done pulling by cable. Yes. No, no, no. Pulling no, no, no. means bring down pulling by is cable. A very, no, 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 no. I got structural engineers tell me all the time they use that phrase to demolish Can we calm down for a second? Hold on a second. Jim, what was the main concern of the people whose job it was to remove the debris from the World Trade Center site? The number one concern. Hum recover human debris, human remains. The damage to the bathtub. Well, I mean, that, that, that was that not occurred. That, 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 that it the, did the occur. About 60% of the bathtub was badly damaged. The south wall of the bathtub was so badly damaged that once they started pulling debris away, the only thing holding it up was the debris. But the when point they started is pulling more. debris away, no, let, no, let no. me finish. You're saying no, I'm saying yes. This, because this is what really, if you no, don't believe me, don't, don't believe me. Talk no, to George, there's an equivocation talk to here. George I'm Tommaso. There's, a, there's an ambiguity. Talk to George Tommaso. Of there's an ambi We're both right, Mark. We're not there's both an right. Yes, because saying, all I've ever talked about is the functional non-damage. It still had the capacity to retain the Hudson River water. You're not going to deny that. It continued to serve its function. You're saying. The fact that it had some damage is indisputable. You're saying that this steel doesn't exist that I'm showing you, and it's on Judy Wood's website. This is the point we keep coming back no to. Pile. People talk about dustifying steel and tons and tons of steel. Let me give you a nice China illustration, Ron, of the key point. Okay, when the when Building Seven came down, you had about seven floors of rubble standing there from a 47-story building. Right. When the Twin Towers came down, it's virtually ground level. You should have like 14 floors no, actually, worth of rubble. No, actually, you had six floors. And no, of you didn't. The, there are well, photographs there no, are very clear taken on, taken you, on the you very same day because to building six seven. floors of rubble. I will show you and the photograph. Judy has a wonderful photograph I would like to have shown here, but it was showing that yeah. you can tell the it's yeah. ground level debris and you have building seven in the background, which means it hasn't even come down And yet. when was... By, by the way, are, are either of you aware of the BBC fiasco where a couple of weeks ago yeah, archival they footage was yeah, they presented the in which gun, obviously they Well, how could they jump the gun unless they had some... The same way all the networks were saying Jim, Jim Brady died after he was shot. You see piles here. In fact, here. he didn't die. Is that a pile? It's taken from, it's taken from the plaza level. Look at the, look at the workers up here. You know how high this is up here? You can tell by the height of the, uh, the arches here. This is over eight stories high right here. And it was buried. This is after it's been uncovered. We're so you're saying there's... What is this? What stories This is the, the North debris. Tower core where people survived the collapse in there. Eighteen people survived in there. Now, well, Judy Wood going to add this to the massive Judy data Wood Judy Wood says, "What happened to Building Six? Here's a picture of Building Six aerial photo, a blurry photo. What could have done this? A big hole in the top of Building Six. Explosives, thermite, mini nukes, beam weapon. The holes are essentially empty." She says, "Little debris visible inside the holes." Now, building here's a, here's a much, Jim, here's a much let me better finish, uh, photograph please. of Building Six. Yeah. We'll, we'll now, when she talks about please. mini nukes, let me, there's let, no let, evidence let, of radiation. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let, let me finish, please. Yep. Will you, just for this picture, will you let I me do that? Okay. Work. Yes, you have. You just interrupted. <laughs> so she's saying that there's no visible debris in this very blurry aerial photo that where the floor of the building is in shadow. She but, must have a dozen photographs of but Building Jim, 6. Yes, but, he, but Jim, look at, look at what you see when you actually look inside Building 6. All of these columns are from the North Tower, which is only 30 feet away from Building 6. All of these are exterior columns from the North Tower with the spandrels intact. Let me just make a recommendation, so, Ron, that we need to do this more patiently. You go through the entire photographic record, but which I would if, very if nearly we, like to do. If we had do. five hours, I think we could Well, we may just have, have, we may just have to do debate. it again. Here's Judy Wood. You guys what? are always <laughs> welcome as long as you bring your own food and booze. Bring your own food and booze. Why would the front of this fire truck wilt? Oh, I love that. Tell me about it. Well, I will. 
Uh, why would you think it wilted? We're seeing a melted fire truck. Right. Well, it's not half melted. melted and half half melted. It's not melted. Yeah. All you have like to many, do. Many automobiles, but Jim, for example. How, let me just, I'm just no, 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 elaborating no, no, another example. Too. Let me finish. Many vehicles had a destroyed God, engine damn. block, and the back half was pristine, and the gas tank hadn't even okay. exploded. Right. This is what we're getting at. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why would the front of this fire truck wilt? Well, what you can do, if you were a scholar, you might say, ladder three, let me give them a ring and see what happened to their fire truck. That's a good idea, huh? Suppose you didn't want to get on the phone. Go Google Ladder 3. Uh, if you Google Ladder 3 wilted, it might take you a while to get to the right answer, or Ladder 3 destroyed by laser beams might take you a while to get to the right answer. But if you just Google Ladder 3, you see a quote from firefighter Vincent Forrest. My first sight upon arrival on the scene was seeing Ladder 3 totally crushed by a large block of the building and twisted into pieces. So I'm not a scholar. I'm not a researcher. Totally crushed. It took me... It took me Two minutes. There are fourteen hundred cars. But, 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 but to you guys, this is evidence. There are fourteen hundred cars scattered all over the place. And they're, they're not scattered all over the place, many, Jim. They have many different were, effects that are very peculiar Jim, and difficult to explain. When a car catches on fire, what? you can you can. Why do they have firewalls on them to keep the fire away from the engine from the engine compartment? Right. Same thing with the gas tank. So if the, fire catch, uh, the car catches fire on the outside, it's likely to burn on the outside where the tires are, where the, where the flammable fluids are. If it catches fire on the inside, the inside might burn out. Google burned cars, and you'll see all of these cars, what what on, cars? on the Internet. What burned cars? Just Google, search, do an Internet search for burned cars. I've seen plenty of An image cars. search, a Google image search. You'll see hundreds of cars that look exactly like that. They were not destroyed by beam weapons. Here's another thing. You're saying yeah. the cars, these cars were affected by beam weapons that dissolved the steel in the we, towers. What, don't but, say what I am saying, but, Mark. We're investigating alternative hypotheses about some sort of directed energy, you're some supporting theories sophisticated that are weapon because so far it's beyond inexplicable on the basis of conventional explosives. It's inexplicable because you've, chosen, the official you've account. chosen not to believe the official version, but you've chosen not the to present an alternative. The version is refutable on every possible ground. In fact, but we, we nothing haven't the actually told us heard false. any refutations. No. Well, I, have a fort, I have a whole document called Why Doubt 9-11 that was published in a revised version in The Nation, Ron, a magazine you may occasionally read yeah, on I the do, 5th of yeah. February, 2007. Take another look. There's seven I, letters to the editor, one of which we're, quite lengthy we're, and extensive. We're running out of time. If, uh, if everyone has enjoyed these uh, contests so far, we can perhaps do it again. Um, I'm going to stand by my opinion that the 9-11 conspiracy movement has given us in five years bogus science, distorted quotes, and many outright falsehoods, but uh, we remain uh, open to uh, any new developments, and we once again thank you for your indulgence. We hope you had as good a time as we did, and uh, for the next show we'll change our clothes. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>